ृष्णपदाता नमा विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण प्रेष्टाय भूतले श्रीमते जयपत्ता नमा आचार्य पदाय कृपाय गौरगता धाम दाय नगर ग्राम धारिणे नमा विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण प्रेषले श्रीमते गोपी पराण धन दास नमा ओं विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण प्रेष्टाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सारस्वते दिवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चाता ृपाचैतन्य कथाचन स्मृते युष्क सुक स्मृते विपरीत is it is sharing now can you see okay um last class i had said that uh, there is a question about um about the guru the the principle of the guru and i had said how bhakti sadhana sasi takur had said that everyone uh, is a manifestation everyone in every ob- every object is a manifestation of the mercy of shri guru and uh, i had i tried to look for it also in that uh, in those words where shri bhakti sadan sasi thakur glorified shri gorkishan baba ji on his disappearance day on the 1st of november 1930 so here is that relevant i could not locate at that point here is what it is I located it now i was a fiercely argumentative logician but my guru maharaj had bestowed his mercy upon me he kicked out this arrogance of argumentation with so much compassion i am not able to reach the end of the glories of his mercy even if i speak for unlimited lifetimes actually no one can ever do so although i am not at all eligible to consider myself a servant he has given me a great hope against hope aasha bandha that i may be once become worthy and that hope can sustain me forever we have put ourselves into a state of nirananda melancholy we are occupying ourselves with temporary activities to an overwhelming degree 
I was aware of my weakness. I expected that I would go astray in my Guru Maharaj's absence and would never be able to hear from him anymore. But today, many incarnations of my Guru Maharaj are so mercifully present right in front of me. They sing Kirtana in my presence. They study the Bhagavatam and expound its meanings. So he's referring to his followers as incarnations of his Guru Maharaj. Uh, when they present ever fresh scriptural explanations, which should have earned my Guru Maharaj's approval, they enliven my dead body and I become aware of my good fortune. I'm able to hear and chant Harikatha 24 hours every day. So that's the reference. Uh, I think that Vidwan Gauranga Prabhu, when he's taking his class, he will provide the other reference. Uh, if, if you don't get it, do let me know. I will provide the other reference also, where he speaks about every uh, person, every animate, inanimate object is a manifestation of the mercy of Sri Guru. Okay, so let's go to today's class. So, uh, 1930 was the year in which Gaur Mohan Dey left his body. Uh, we know that Srila Prabhupada was said that he was affected by his uh, uh, father leaving his body, not in a mundane sense, like how mundane people get affected, but he was feeling the loss of the association of a pure devotee. 1930 was also the year in which the Bhag Bazaar temple was opened. Bhag Bazaar temple, uh, it, uh, Bhag Bazaar is the name of a bazaar and there's a temple there, uh, the Gaudiya Mutt temple. So this is constructed using the donation of a wealthy merchant. Before that, they were living in Alta Danga Road. Bhakti Siddhartha Sarasri Thakur and his disciples were living in Alta Danga Road where Srila Prabhupada met him in 1922. So uh, eight years later, they moved from there to the uh, Bhag Bazaar temple. Now in Allahabad, we know that Srila Prabhupada is associating with his God brothers and helping them in various ways with his friends and giving them contacts to raise funds. He would also go into Kirtan in the temple in the evenings. And uh, he was helping uh, the Gaudiya Mart in uh, Prayagraj in uh, various ways. Allahabad is now Prayagraj in various ways. Now, he, ha he had a desire to go and meet his uh, Guru Maharaj, who was actually leading uh, Parikrama, the Vrindavan Parikrama in uh, Vrindavan on the occasion of Karthik in 1932. Now, uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsi Thakur's Parikramas and Vrindavan were quite famous. Famous for uh, two reasons. Uh, one is the fact that so many large number of disciples, he had followers, he had gathered, and they would, they would have a very organized uh, Parikrama program, just like we have our Naudip Mandal program. I have not attended Vrindavan Parikrama, so I can't comment on that. But I have attended uh, Naudi Mandal Parikrama. So how you have these organized camps. So like that, uh, they would go one day in advance, pitch the tent there, make cooking arrangements. And by the time the party reaches, everything would be ready. So um, uh, what happens is that uh, the way they have formed the uh, camps were that in the center would be Shula Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur's tent. Around that would be sannyasis and then others and then grihasthas. So that men would be separate and the women would be separate. And in the night they would have lighting and all that. So uh, Satsurup Maharaj comments, which is a fact that the, res the villagers, uh, the Brajavasis, it is almost like a whole town being established with all the lighting and all the uh, residential facility, although it, it was only tents. So, uh, Prabhupada reached, uh, Karth, uh, reached Vrindavan at the place called Koshi. Now, those of you who have been going to Vrindavan, uh, you may, while coming from Delhi along the National Highway, not the, uh, uh, not the Amuna Expressway, but the uh, National Highway, we would, you would have to cross through Koshi Kalan. 
this is the place coach that is the real edge of vrindavan and uh, that's the place where nandam raj had his treasury so proper reached there that was the that was the last destination of the parikrama and uh, bhakti santa sasi tapur and his party had reached there and proper reached there also on the last day proper took a few days break from his business because he was busy traveling to get new businesses he had become as we studied earlier he had become he had established his own prayag pharmacy he was working as an agent of uh, dr kartik bos so what happens is that okay so then he he goes to koshi and on the day he reached uh, the the system as we have in our navadi pandi parikrama also is that in the evening uh, senior devotees and sanyasis they speak so the same was the system at, originally also bhakti santa sasi tapur would speak in the evenings so uh, so uh shri prabhupada recollects i was not initiated at the time of the parikram but i had a very good admiration for these gaudiya math people they were very kind to me so i thought what are these people doing in this parikram let me go so i met them at koshi so i met them in koshi and keshav maharaj was informing that shila bhakti is mathura tomorrow morning and he will speak his harikatha this evening anyone who wants to may remain or otherwise they may go to see seshashai vishnu so at that time i think only 10 or 12 men remain shridhar maharaj was one of them and i thought it wise what can i see at the seshashai let me hear what shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati will speak let me hear now this is very important because our philosophy is bhakti santa sasri takur also would often say uh, that do not try to see god act in such a way that god sees you you know and uh, our process in krishna consciousness is we don't see god through the eyes we see god through our ears you know? so uh, shri prabhupad right from the very beginning see so you can see this is the characteristic of an eternal associate of the lord right from the very beginning of his unfolding of krishna consciousness previously before unfolding it's a different leela of yoga maya but once his krishna consciousness begins to unfold you can see how strongly rooted he is in the correct uh, methods and practices of krishna consciousness and the philosophy also so uh, um um so uh, he uh, uh, so he prefers to stay back and hear hear bhakti santa sri takur and he spoke not just for one hour one hour went by another hour went by and slowly even that internal group of sanyasis some of them had to excuse themselves to perform some of the parikrama duties of preparing but prabhupad continued to just sit and prabhupad often recollects it did not matter to me whether i understood or i did not understand because he said my guru maharaj was a great scholar and uh, he was a very knowledgeable person so i it did not matter to me uh, whether i understood or did not understand i wanted to simply hear my guru maharaj so prabhupad was uh, very fond of that hearing which uh, shila bhakti santa sasri takur had noted which will come up a little later hmm. now prabhupad met uh, Shila Bhakti Sarada Sashi Thakur in 1922. Now we are talking about 1932. So it's ten years later actually. But uh, Prabhupada had never forgotten uh, the impression that he had of Shila Bhakti Sarada Sashi Thakur. And as uh, Prabhupada said, I had right on that first day Shila Prabhupada had accepted him as his Guru Maharaj, not officially, but in his heart he had accepted. so on the 21st of november uh shila bhakti siddhanta sasri thakur arrived in prayagraj for the installation of the deities of uh, sorry here this is not for installation of the deities he arrived in prayagraj for the ground laying ceremony uh, ground breaking ceremony of shri rupa gaudiya math and uh, by the efforts of atulananda brahmachari along with others especially 
uh, helped by Shri Prabhupada, they had, they had progressed to a stage where they could buy land to build a temple. And Shri Bhaktisanta Sushtakur personally came. And at that time, uh, there was uh, supposed to be a initiation uh, ceremony. So, uh, what happens is that, yeah, so what happens is that Atulananda Brahmachari, who was close to Shri Prabhupada, he, he wanted to, uh, Prabhupada was uh, hoping to get initiated by Shri Bhaktisiddhanta Sasri Thakur. And Atulananda Brahmachari takes the responsibility to introduce him and seek uh, the permission of for initiation. So when Atulananda Brahmachari announces, uh, introduces uh, Prabhupada to Sila Saraswati Thakur, he immediately responds by saying, yes, he likes to hear. He does not go away. I have marked him. So some of them, of course, were not sure how, where Bhaktisanta Thakur had met him. But uh, Bhakti Santa Saswati Thakur had noted that instance in Koshi, where Srila Prabhupada just stayed back and just heard him, just heard him. And uh, Prabhupada also said, I never asked my spiritual master any question except one, how shall I serve you? That was Prabhupada. Whatever his spiritual master said, he simply accepted it. He simply accepted it. And so uh, Bhakti Santa Saswati Thakur was pleased to accept uh, Srila Prabhupada, Abhai Sharande, as his disciple. And he gave him the name Abhai Sharana Aravinda. He just added Aravinda. Abhai Charan means one who is fearless, having taken shelter of the uh, lotus feet of Krishna. But Aravinda specifically means lotus. So Charana Aravinda means lotus feet. Lotus, the feet are always described as lotus feet, but the name Aravinda was added to uh, Srila Prabhupada's original name. So he was known as Abhai Charanaravinda Das. And uh, interestingly, he gave him not only first initiation, but he also gave him second initiation. Usually, uh, Bhakti Santa Sarasri Thakur, he would uh, give them Harinam initiation first. And after a period of time, seeing their practice, he would give them second initiation. But in Srila Prabhupada's case, he gave both first initiation and second initiation at the same time. And at the time of uh, initiation, at the time of initiation, uh, he gave the instruction to read Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Sarasila Saraswati Thakur gave proper the instruction to read Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu as the law book of devotional service. Therefore, Prabhupada also titles it as, subtitles it as, the signs of devotional service. The signs of Bhakti Yoga. And uh, Prabhupada's wife, however, was not so keen about getting initiated, although Srila Prabhupada proposed his wife that she could also consider taking initiation. She just wanted to be just happy at home practicing Krishna consciousness without making the formal commitment of initiation. So there's something which Prabhupada speaks about it. Srila Prabhupada, my wife was a devotee of Krishna, but she had some other idea. Her idea was just to worship the deity at home and live peacefully. My idea was preaching. Uh, because what happened is uh, right after his initiation, Srila Prabhupada was trying to get involved with preaching. So he wanted to uh, invite his god brothers home uh, for, for uh, giving classes and uh, inviting friends over so that uh, he could preach to them. But his wife was not interested in those activities. That's why Srila Prabhupada is saying that. So he got initiated in 1932. And between 1932 and 1936, Srila Prabhupada met his Guru Maharaj about 12 times. Uh, this is the actual association we ha he had with his Guru Maharaj. First was in 1922. Then he met him in uh, 1932 at Poshikalan. Then again in October. And then in November, he got initiated. And between the next four years, he met him about uh, 12 times. Now, uh, most of these uh, occasions were when he would actually go and meet his 
Guru Maharaj in the Bhag Bazar Gaudiya Mutt, and uh, or he would travel to uh, uh, Mayapur and meet him at the Chaitanya Mutt. So um, Prabhupada was very very dignified gentleman. So when Prabhupada would arrive in Calcutta to meet Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur uh, from the Bhag Bazar Gaudiya Mutt, they would send uh, Nityananda Brahmachari with the horse to. Today you have cars, but during the, those days you had horses, so two horse carriage. And Prabhupada would come along with Nityananda Brahmachari. And uh, Nityananda Brahmachari collects that Prabhupada seemed to be very humble and also very tolerant. And he was not interested in the affairs of the Gaudiyam Mutt, whatever was going on in Gaudiyam Mutt. He just liked to just come and serve, his, serve the devotees and just serve as Guru Maharaj. That's all. He was not involved in any of the affairs of the Gaudiyam Mutt. Uh, Although uh, Aturananda Brahmachari and others, they found uh, Prabhupada to be very useful uh, as, a, as a preacher. So they would always wonder that he could, he could actually commit himself to being a full-time resident of the Gaudiya Mutt. Uh, but Prabhupada nevertheless never participated in any of the management affairs of the Gaudiya Mutt. Okay, uh, this is an important incident where uh, Prabhupada, when he comes to Mayapur, he sees that uh, there is a big snake which crawled out into the courtyard and uh, nobody knew exactly how to deal with it. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasri Thakur, he appeared on uh, the roof of his balcony, uh, appeared on this balcony rather, and uh, he gave the instruction to kill the snake. And Prabhupada says at first he was, he was not sure why he gave that instruction. Let's hear Prabhupada what he says. So I thought, how is that Guru Maharaj ordered the snake to be killed? I was a little surprised. But later on, I saw this verse. And then I was very glad. Modeta sadhu api vrishchika sarpahatya. Even saintly persons take pleasure in the killing of a scorpion or a snake. It remained a doubt. How Guru Maharaj ordered the snake to be killed? But when I read this verse, I was very much pleased that this creature or creatures like the snake should not be shown any mercy. Of course, it, throughout the Prophet's life, he always displays as if he's just like an ordinary person like us who, have, who has doubts like us. But it's not out of, I mean, he's not ignorant like us that we should be very cautious about. Uh, many of these things are instructional. Uh, uh, what's it? So, so when he speaks, I had a doubt. It's not like doubt how atheists, how uh, those of us conditioned by uh, uh, billions and billions of years in the material world are have doubts. It's not, a, it's not of that kind. Okay. Now, it's very interesting that uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Chakur was, was, uh, was considered the Simha Guru, the Lion Guru. The I mean, everybody would be very uh, all the scholars, the mundane, the caste brahmanas, all of them would be very, uh, very uh, worried about being face to face with him because he was like the uncompromising simple guru. But Srila Prabhupada had a very affectionate relationship with his Guru Maharaj. In fact, uh, all saintly persons, all saintly persons, this is the characteristic of a saintly person, that they're affectionate towards all living entities. So it all, it's only a question of how one, one is able to uh, uh, extract that affection by their behavior. So if, they be, if we behave appropriately with a saintly person, we'll be able to extract very affectionate, extract, I'm not like talking in a, in a mundane sense of extract, I'm talking about in terms of be able to extract a very affectionate relationship with all saintly people. That's the nature of a saintly person. Okay, so uh, Prabhupada himself speaks about a relationship with Guru Maharaj. Whenever I met my Guru Maharaj, he would always treat me very affectionately. Sometimes my god brothers would criticize because I would talk a little freely with him. And they would quote this English saying, fools rush in 
where angels fear to tread. But I would think, fool? Well, maybe but that is the way I am. My Guru Maharaj was always very, very affectionate to me. When I offered obeisances, he used to return, Dasos me, I am your servant. Why is it going back to the original first page? I don't know. Oh, okay. Can you just uh, help me out? I don't want to. This is crazy. Can we, uh, what to do? Close all the tabs on top? Just give me a second. I'll just. I didn't open one right now. Yes, okay, I need to open this tab. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Fine? Yeah. Okay, so I need to open from the top, is it? Yeah. Um, not only had they had an, they had an affectionate relationship. Um, once, when uh, Srila Prabhupada walked into the room of his Guru Maharaj, he was sitting on a couch, and uh, Prabhupada actually sat on a, another couch next to him on the same level. Uh, and we noticed that all his god brothers were sitting on the floor. But nevertheless, Prabhupada continued sitting, and Bhakti Santa Sasi Thakur did not say anything about it. Uh, of course, that's not that Prabhupada is proud or therefore he went and sat like that. It's just that he had a very um, he had a very respectful relationship. So it is not out of disrespect that he did it. Uh, the point is that Bhakti Sadhya Thakur, I mean, although he is a Summa Guru and a fine Guru, he is very affectionate. Now, this is a very interesting incident where uh, Prabhupada gets chastised by his uh, Guru Maharaj. So once he was talking, he was giving class in the room. And uh, an old man uh, interrupt, I mean, patted Prabhupada on his back and asked him a question. So Prabhupada is responding to that question. And immediately, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasri Thakur got upset. And uh, he told that gentleman, the old gentleman, he said, Hey Babu, have you, do you think that you have purchased me with 150 rupees donation that you're giving every month? Because he was a prominent donor. So they were prominent donor, 150 rupees per month during those days is, is quite a huge amount of money. But uh, Bhakti Sandhya Thakur did not bother about it. There can be nothing which can uh, obstruct rapt attention. There nothing is acceptable which interrupts rapt attention. Similarly, uh, what Sri Chastais Shla Prabhupada by saying that, why don't you come up and speak here instead of me? And Prabhupada recollects that, oh, I was mort externally, I was mortified, he says, but internally I was relishing it. You know, so Prabhupada, although he said that was that is a moment of ecstasy. That is the nature of a disciple. Uh, that when the guru chastises, they take it as so much kindness that I was corrected on the path back to God. That is the attitude that a disciple has to have. Uh, when a superior or the guru corrects us, then we should take it as a moment of ecstasy. Oh. We are being corrected on the path of going back to God. Now our path will become even more smoother. Srila uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur um, was known as the Simha Guru, the Lion Guru. Lion means all the uh, animals in the forest are terrified of the lion, especially the roar of the lion. You know, so. Uh, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami uh, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, he quotes this uh, verse Anarpita Charim Charat Karuna Avati Rakalo, Samarpayitum Unnata Ujjwala Rasa, Sobaktim Shriya, Haripurata uh, Dutikadamba Sandi Pita, Sada Hridea Kandare, Suratuva Sachinandana. Sada Hridea Kandare means may that Supreme Lord, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sada Hridea Kandare. May he be always situated in the heart 
or uh, is situated in the heart, situated in your heart. What does it mean? And what does he do? Sadaahridayam kandare suratuva sachinandanaha. The meaning is that uh, it also refers to a lion. So, uh, may Lord Chaitanya, who roars like a lion, be situated in the core of our hearts. And what, has happened, what happens when a lion roars? Even elephants get frightened. So, that is the whole idea. So, then Krishna Skivaraj Goswami, because he's a kavi. So, Sada Hride Kandare Svaratuva Sachinandanaha. So, Lord Chaitanya, uh, by his roar, the, by the roar, he's like a roar, uh, he's like a lion. Uh, Krishna Skivaraj Goswami explains. And Lord Chaitanya had shoulders like a uh, uh, lion, Shimma Vasuk. He says he had, he had a body like a lion, he had a, he had a gait like a lion, a voice like a lion. So when Lord Chaitanya, uh, by, 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 uh, by having Lord Chaitanya in our hearts, may that lion roar, Lord Chaitanya roar, and the elephant tank vices of Kaliuga, the vices of Kaliuga, the, the negative qualities of Kaliuga like an elephant. But when Lord Chaitanya roars, then the elephant gets frightened. So uh, this is the uh, characteristic of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. That he was called the Simha Guru because in presence, in, 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 in front of his presentation of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, nothing could stand in front of that presentation. All the Mayavadis, the caste Brahmins, everybody would be completely defeated, however big they may be, because he was like the Simha Guru. Okay, so um, here we go. Now we'll not have this problem anymore after this. <laughs> You can. Wife is back. Okay. Should we break this and connect? No, no I won't disconnect. Don't disconnect. Should I continue to speak? Yeah. No, let's just get on. Right. It's a small break. No. Yeah. Okay. I don't think. Uh, okay. My Guru Maharaj's contribution is that he defeated the caste Goswamis. He defeated this Brahminism. He did it the same way as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did. As Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Kiba Vipra Kiba Nyasi Sudra Kena Naya Ye Krishna Tattva Vetta Se Guru Hoya. There is no consideration whether one is a sannyasi. A Brahmana, a Shudra, or a Grihastha. No, anyone who knows the signs of Krishna, he is all right. He is Goswami and he is Brahmana. But no one else taught that since Lord, since Lord Chaitanya. That was my Guru Maharaj's contribution. And for this reason, he had to face so many vehement protests from these Brahmana caste Goswamis. Once they conspired to kill him. My Guru Maharaj told me personally, by his grace, when he used, when we used to meet alone, he used to talk about so many things. He was so kind that he used to talk with me. And he personally told me that these people, they wanted to kill me, these caste Brahmins. So they collected 25,000 rupees during those days and went to bribe the police officer in charge of the area saying, you take these 25,000 rupees, we shall do something against Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and you don't take any steps. He could understand that they wanted to kill him. So the police officer frankly came to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Of course, we accept bribes and we indulge in such things, but not for a sadhu, not for a saintly person. I cannot dare. So the police officer refused and said to my Guru Maharaj, you take care. This is the position. So vehemently, they protested. When my Guru Maharaj is present, even big, big scholars were afraid to talk with his, even with his beginning students. This is called the Sama Guru. Uh, my Guru Maharaj is called a living encyclopedia. He could talk with anyone on any subject. He was so learned and no compromised. And no compromise. So-called saints, avatars, yogis, everyone was false, was an enemy to my Guru Maharaj. He never compromised. Some God brothers complained that this preaching was a chopping technique and it would not be successful. But those who criticized him fell down. Now, uh, it is not that 
Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Chaku just did that himself. He expected his followers to do the same thing. And Shila Prabhupada says very clearly, I, I, I didn't bring that reference today, but uh, you can, I'll bring it up uh, later. So there uh, he says very clearly, uh, I'll find it and bring it to the class later. But he clearly says that as far as I'm concerned, I followed the uh, uh, policy of my Guru Maharaj. And Prabhupada credited his success to following the policy of his Guru Maharaj. And what is it? This is it. Uh, this is from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. I, I was supposed to say this last class, but I forgot uh, to bring the reference. Okay. So the, please hear this carefully. As members of the Krishna consciousness movement, we belong to the family or disciplic succession of Saraswati Goswami. And thus we are known as Saraswatas. Obeisances are therefore offered to the spiritual master as Saraswata Deva or a member of the Saraswata family. Namaste Saraswate Devi. Now, sometimes when we sing Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra, uh, you may have heard sometimes they sing Saraswati Devi. Prabhupada himself says, there is not Saraswati. This is Namaste Saraswati Devi. Uh, 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 or a member of the Saraswata family. Namaste Saraswati Devi. Whose mission is to broadcast the cult of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gauravani Pracharya, and to fight with the impersonalists and voidists. Notice the expression. Fight with the impersonalists and voidists. That is also the occupation duty of Sanatan Goswami, Rupa Goswami, and Anupama Goswami. Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adilila, chapter 10, text 84, purport. Now, this is Prabhupada's definition. This is our identity. Very clearly defined. Who are the members of the Krishna consciousness movement? One, who broadcast the cult of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Number two, who fight with the impersonalists and Mayavadis. Now, sometimes we hear. That, oh, uh, during Prabhupada's time, it was different. And now we have to be friendly with everybody. We have to be friendly with everybody. That's a fact. But that doesn't mean that just uh, they punch us and we roll with the punch. Like they say, they talk some impersonalist nonsense or some something which is, uh, which is, which is uh, false. And we just, uh, they, it's like a punch. And if you start rolling with that punch, then we are not Saraswata. Saraswata means we oppose anything which is, uh, against impersonalism, anything spoken in, in line with impersonalism or voidism, or anything which is false, that's the whole idea. Which Prabhupada writes there, anything which is false, my Guru Maharaj would not accept. You know, so um, uh, sometimes it is said that uh, we, we can also adopt Bhakti Vinod Thakur's strategy. Bhakti Vinod Thakur was very friendly with all the people of his time. You know, so then uh, sometimes some dev 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 devotees promote this idea that look, oh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur pre preached the Badrilok. They were the gentlemen, the brother Lodmi, the gentlemen of Bengal during those days. It's okay, let's be friendly with everyone like them. You know. uh, so, um, the one thing that we need to understand is that Bhakti Vinod Thakur can be, can be best understood through Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. You don't see a sadhu through the eyes. We see sadhus through the ears. And uh, um, what is it? Bhakti Vinod. I, I remember one sannyasi in Iskam. I think it was Bhakti Vinod. Anyway, uh, one sannyasi in Iskam. I don't remember who it is. Who said once that uh, Bhakti Vinod. Bhakti Vinod means uh, um, one who gives pleasure to Bhakti. Well, giving pleasure to Bhakti. So we cannot give pleasure to Bhakti. We cannot get that. We cannot attain Bhakti Vinod. Giving pleasure to Bhakti without Bhakti Siddhanta. It's like a, it's like an analogy. It's like, what do you call it? Uh, not what do you call that? It's like a metaphor. So, uh, we cannot understand Bhakti Vinod Thakur's activity simply by looking at it through our eyes. We understand uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur through Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and through Srila Prabhupada. Now, the way uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur presented the teachings of Krishna consciousness and the way Srila Prabhupada presented, this is the way we are supposed to be. Now, if you notice during Prabhupada's life, he was very friendly with Dr. Mishra. He even took care of Dr. Mishra, Mayavadi. When Dr. Mishra said, Prabhupada would go there, cook for him and take care of him. But when Prabhupada was asked to speak, Prabhupada spoke uncompromisingly. And because he spoke uncompromisingly, Prabhupada says, Mishra, stop me. But he said, I mean, Prabhupada is not bothered. Because anywhere, even in India, once he was invited to this uh, Gita, uh, they were organizing the Sammelan on the Gita. And Prabhupada was invited to that. First, all the Mayavadis and others spoke. And finally, when Prabhupada spoke, he defeated all of them. But this is our Saraswata. This is our cardinal duty. The moment we 
do not oppose for whatever reason of course unless we are in a muslim country that's a different thing where where our long term preaching is going to get affected but apart from that where there is threat to life uh, even in the even in the mahabharat krishna says there are certain conditions where we can avoid speaking uh, as we are supposed to speak one of that is when your life is in danger so you go to a muslim country and speak like this they may they shoot you so they may shoot us so therefore uh, only in those circumstances uh, things have to be to follow the instruction of krishna there that uh, we should uh, not speak everything as they are but but in all other circumstances where there's no threat to life so there's no injunction that we're not supposed to uh, uh, not speak the truth just to please is to become friends this is not the strategy of shila bhaktisnath sasri thakur or uh, shila prabhupa now uh, there's an anecdote dude, which happened during shila prabhupa's own life which i wanted to bring up in today's class uh, now shila prabhupa is very pleased actually i wrote this myself shila prabhupa is very pleased to hear about his disciple his grace govind dasi who stood up on a bench and shouted the correct philosophy at a meeting where the speaker was a mayawadi so let's hear what prabhupa say exactly prabhupa says and what was his reaction prabhupa says just like our student govind dasi in hawaii in a meeting she became very angry and the so called incarnation of god and god perhaps you know this incident and the people did not say of course govind dasi but they heard her husband gor gaurasundara but she became very angry that these rascals and so many things she spoke chuckles so she did right like a heroine i very much liked it so we should be very much angry when when there is anything against god and god's devotee but generally for my personal interest i should not be angry all right if you like to call me by ill names i don't mind you go on with your business i do not become angry so shri prabhupada is very clearly making a point that we should not think oh we are superior to all these people and simply call them rascals that's not the point the point is if somebody calls us hey you are a rascal we accept yes we have fallen we are the most fallen among all people we don't become angry for that but if there's a wrong philosophy that is presented or if there is something against god's devotees that is presented then a devotee is supposed to become uh proper the same we should be very much angry proper says now before this proper actually writes before the quote which i presented here i was so much enlivened by hearing proper the speaking i was so much enlivened remember that our philosophy is yasya prasadat bhagavat prasad we are supposed to enliven proper so here is what going the das said uh by which he became so enlivened i was so much enlivened by hearing of your spirited preaching activities i am proud that a little young girl like you is so much spirited in preaching krishna consciousness then he says i have asked the back to god and men to publish your heroic preaching activities under the heading of heroine govinda dasi this is an article which prabhupad wanted to be published which is published also in the back to god now notice after all this when he is writing a letter to gaurasundar look at how he is referring to govinda das he later he later he, he writes later on in letter to her husband gaurasundar i am always thinking of govinda dasi although she is young and delicate almost always suffering from some ailment still she is so sincere devotee and spirited preacher that I have named her heroine govinda dasi this is july later on four months later in november when he writes a letter to gaurasundar he does not say you and your wife in fact he says he is giving some instruction and then he says you and heroine govinda dasi do this so so proper is so fond of what he did that he repeatedly referred to her as govinda dasi even after four months so this is what it means to be a saraswata because she did not compromise and because that was the mood of his guru maharaj proper is very much obliged to her uh, okay Mm. Uh, we know this famous incident where uh, uh, Subhash Chandra Bose he came to meet uh, Shri Bhakti Siddhant Sir Sri Thakur. If you if you've uh, not heard of this, then uh, just give me a second. I don't know if I've referred it here. Let me see. Maybe yeah, again I created the same. I made the same step. Okay. Oh, it's there. Okay. So, the proper Subhash Chandra Bose came to my Guru Maharaj and said, "So many people you have captured. 
they're doing nothing for nationalism my guru maharaj replied well for your national propaganda you require very strong men but these people are very weak you can see they are very skinny so don't put your glance upon them let them eat something and chant hari krishna in this way he avoided subhash chandra bose okay now uh, bhakti sandh sarasvati thakur uh, is very uh, very famous for his uh, erudition i mean deep scriptural knowledge you know and his his the way man, manner in which he presented uh, the philosophy was uh, was for certain there was a different class altogether um if we if we read the brahma samhita then uh, we can get a glimpse of that the materialistic demeanor cannot stretch to the transcendental autocrat you know so he speaks like this materialistic demeanor means uh, this, the the school of empiricism the way of mental speculation cannot reach the transcendental autocrat autocrat means he is not bound by to come under the control of someone's uh, mental speculation so he is a transcendental autocrat he doesn't care you know so he uses words like this so basically he 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 expounded this thing very strongly don't think that by your effort who i mean you can understand anything of god he gave the example of licking the honey try to taste honey by licking the outside of the bottle by licking the outside of the bottle there is no way that anyone can taste what honey is so empiricists are like that but this is a very famous thing that he spoke about cheaters and the cheated probably used to say my guru maharaj used to say cheaters and the cheated cheaters and the cheated he would say that the world has only two category of people materialism means there are two category cheaters cheater cheaters cheater cheaters cheater so everybody is cheating only it's not that uh, scientists are all very glorious in their what's it, in their uh, in their activity they also cheat everybody cheats in this material world like uh, uh, sadaputta prabhu and uh, dutakan prabhu in their book forbidden archaeology they bring up how even during this the theory of evolution how there so many scientists have also cheated you know it's not like oh, it's all a very noble enterprise so there's no noble enterprise in this material world every enterprise involves cheating so you always have cheaters there are only two categories of people the cheaters and the cheated and he he specifically gave the example of uh, during those days um, uh, it was considered that to have a child by a sadhu was uh, prestigious so these loose women they would go and try to seduce a sadhu in vrindavan and to have a child and knowing that so many people would dress up like a sadhu and sit there so he that's he gave the example that this is what it is depending on the demand there is a market you know so uh, like that so that is how the cheaters and cheated operate whatever be the demand they pro- create a market for it okay uh, strict sanyasi uh, prabhupad gives the example that his guru maharaj uh, was so strict that when one of his uh, disciples wife he said the disciple was young wife was as young as bhakti sandhya sri thakur's granddaughter could be so young nevertheless when she wanted to meet him in private she refused this is the perfect example of a sanyasi that uh, sanyasi does not talk to a woman alone sanyasi does not talk to a woman alone uh, nor does he have a relationship with a woman alone it just does not work like that uh, okay uh, uh, one of uh, one of uh, bhakti sanat stakur's famous aphorism was prana che yar se hetu prachar over his life should preach over his life should preach because preaching is something that you can do only in this material world you cannot do this in the spiritual world sanatan goswami also speaks about you cannot kill demons and you cannot preach in the spiritual world this is an exclusive activity that we can do only in this material world and uh, when we sing the samsara prayers when we uh, sing the samsara prayers when we think of prabhupada and we sing nikunja you know ratikeli siddhai what does it mean nikunja you know ratikeli siddhai how are we assisting uh, the spiritual masters assisting the gopis you know how do you how do you visualize this so then uh, rameshwar prabhu uh, was sanyasi at that time i think uh, i don't know if he was sanyasi anyway uh, so he gave a class during prabhupada's time where he said that book distribution preaching is the external manifestation of nikunja you know ratikeli siddhai you know and uh, there is one mataji who was was not very sure whether this is rameshwar prabhu speculation so he she wrote to shila prabhu ka that i heard in this lecture by rameshwar prabhu that he saying 
that Nikunja you know Ratikeli Siddhai means to preach. This is correct. Prabhupada said he has understood correctly. Because if you look at the Gopi Gita, Tavakatamritam verse, so uh, the, we are supposed to develop in the mood of the Gopis, the Gopi Bhav. Gopi Bhartu Padakamalayor Dasa Dasa Anudasa. We are supposed to follow in the footsteps of the Gopis. Now, we are supposed to be thinking of the Gopis, but what are the Gopis thinking? The Gopis are thinking about the preachers. Burida, Burida Jana. Burida Jana, they say. I mean, they are the most munificent, those who spread Tavakatamritam, the glories of Krishna. So we are supposed to be thinking of the Gopis, but what are the Gopis thinking? They are thinking about the preachers. So preaching is the is um, I mean is is the external manifestation of Madhurya Bhav. Madhurya Bhav when it manifests externally, it is displayed as Audharya. Internal is Madhurya, external it manifests as Audharya. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came to display both Madhurya and Audharya. Madhurya was his internal thing, externally he was preaching. Some people say internal is more important than external. That's a wrong argument because. Uh, the Lord, there's no difference between his internal and external. It's all the same. So, uh, this is Bhakti Sanchez Thakur's contribution to Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And uh, also uh, Srila Prabhupada, of course, Bhakti Rota, that uh, he, they especially pointed out that we have to preach. We have to preach. So, even today, if we go to Gaudiya Pant, uh, sorry, if we go to Radha Kund, there are, of course, we don't associate with the Babaji's, but they, there's propaganda that uh, these Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's followers, they don't like Bhakti Siddhanta because they think, they say, well, what is this businessman selling books and very, these are all very uh, inferior. We are superior. Raganuga Bhakti, yes. Raganuga Bhakti is definitely superior, but uh, Raganuga Bhakti does not exclude preaching. I mean, preaching is in all stages of Bhakti. It is the external manifestation of Madhurya. External manifestation of Madhurya is Odharya. This is the contribution of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And which Prabhupada repeatedly hammered it into our brains. And he was also against this uh, trying to imitate uh, the eternal association of Manatuni Kisir Vaishnava. He wrote a book called Vaishnava K. Uh, Srila Jayapataka Maharaj has written a commentary, beautiful commentary on that. Now, the whole book is dedicated to saying that we should not try to imitate Haridas Thakur and try to go and sit in Radha Kund and chant. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Sixty-four rounds, or one twenty-eight rounds, or even more. You know, because these, because if we are unqualified, if we are not free from anarthas, we are not qualified to reside in Radha Kund. and then we'll only think about women and money. So he he criticizes that attitude of trying to prematurely go to Radha Kund. Okay, so uh, after Shila Prabhupada was initiated, um, he he wanted to help in his Guru Maharaj's mission. So, as I said earlier, they were uh, trying to uh, inspire Prabhupada to join the Mutt. But Prabhupada thought, why shall I pick? And he, let us hear his own words on this. My Guru Maharaj ordered me, you do this, but I thought, let me first of all become a rich man. Then I shall do. In the beginning, I was thinking, now my god brothers have taken sannyas. They are begging from door to door. Why shall I beg? Let me earn money and start Krishna consciousness. Now, so in the process of trying to earn money, what had happened was that we know that Prabhupada initially worked as a manager in Dr. Bose's laboratory in Calcutta. But from Calcutta, he moved to Prayagraj to set up his own, uh, not laboratory, but set up his own business, pharmacy. And he was an agent of Dr. Bose. And as an agent, he would travel to different places and try to get, uh, try to supply Dr. Bose's products to uh, the other pharmacies as an agent of Dr. Bose. Now, uh, those of you who, who know a little bit of business know that uh, a lot of things work on credit. So Prabhupada would give uh, on credit, but he, he would not be able to, he was not able to recover. So it became a huge debt at one point in time. So uh, then what happened was Dr. Bose personally came to allow to Prayagraj and met with Prabhupada. Prabhupada also made him meet Dr. Ghosh, who was the physician in the clinic, uh, in the pharmacy. And Dr. Ghosh explained to uh, Dr. Bose that uh, Prabhupada is actually very sincere. He's generally trying to expand the business, but he's not very good at recovering the money. 
and therefore uh, the business is uh, therefore uh, Dr. Bose is losing money. So then uh, Dr. Bose made an arrangement with Prabhupada that he'll take over the Prayag Pharmacy and all the debts along with it and he will run it. So which means that Prabhupada essentially became back to square one. So he had to now think of what to do next. So what he does is that he goes from Prayagraj, Mumbai because he thinks first he was a uh, manager, then he was an agent. Now he thought, let me become a manufacturer itself. So he thought of upgrading himself in the, in the, in the, in, with the hopes of earning more money for, uh, for, for, for spreading the mission of Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Chakur. So he went to Mumbai along with his uh, brother uh, Krishna Charan to, uh, to try to establish a business. And his nephew Tulsi, he left him in Allahabad uh, he already started a small manufacturing unit in Allahabad and he, he uh, left his tools, uh, nephew Tulsi there to market the product there. Okay. Now, in Bombay, uh, what happens is that um, Srila Prabhupada uh, meets Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj and Bhakti Saranga Maharaj. Now, both of them have been sent to Bombay by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. They established a center in Bombay. And uh, Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj was very good, very good scholar. Whereas Bhakti Sarang Maharaj was a very good writer and preacher. But they did not have enough contacts. They were struggling. They were staying in a uh, place called Proctor Road in Mumbai. And so Prabhupada, because being a businessman, he had a lot of contacts. So he really helped them to establish, to get a center in uh, Mumbai a proper center in Mumbai. So proper recollects. We made a party for collecting arms. Sridhar Maharaj, Goswami Maharaj. But Goswami Maharaj is referring to Bhakti Saranga Goswami Maharaj and myself. I took them to some of my chemist and doctor friends. And two days we collected 500 rupees. Sridhar Maharaj would speak. I would introduce and Goswami Maharaj would canvas. So look at the communist. Sridhar Maharaj would speak. I would introduce and Goswami Maharaj would comment, would canvas. So uh, Goswami Maharaj very, was very, very much appreciated and he began to speak highly about me. For a Babu, he's so expert. He has got so many friends and he has collected so much. Why should he not be in charge of our Mata? Why should he live? Why shouldn't he live with us? Why is he living separately? Okay. Uh, then what happens is that uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Chakur, he comes to uh, Mumbai. You know, uh, well, I think this happens a little later. Just give me a second. I think this happens a little later. Yeah, uh, this happens a little later. Okay, so before that is the uh, uh, before Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Chakur's arrival, he comes, uh, okay, this is February 25th, he comes actually in July. Okay, so uh, so like that, Prabhupada was actively trying to help his god brothers establish a center in uh, Mumbai. Finally, uh, the center is established, and in July, uh, Pakistan Sister Thakur comes. But before that, in February was uh, the 62nd Vyasa Puja of uh, Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sister Thakur. So, on the 25th of February 1935, that is when he wrote those famous offerings, those brilliant offerings to his Guru Maharaj. So let's, these are so nectarian. We need to drown himself in that, uh, drown ourselves in that nectar. So let's go to that poem straight. That what Prabhupada wrote. Okay, here we are. Adore, adore ye are. Thy ha the happy day. Blessed than heaven, sweeter than May. When he appeared at Puri, the holy place, my Lord and Master, his divine grace. O oh, my master, the evangelic angel, give us thy light, light up thy candle, struggle for existence, a human race. The only hope is divine grace. Misled we are, all going astray, serve us, Lord, our fervent pray. Wonder thy ways to turn our face, adore thy feet, your divine grace. Forgotten Krishna, we fallen souls, paying most heavy, the illusion stole. Darkness around, all untraced. The only hope is divine grace. Message of service thou has brought. A healthy full life as Chaitanya rocked. Unknown, unknown to all, it's full of brace. 
That's your gift, your divine grace. Absolute is sentient, thou hast proved. Impersonal calamity, thou hast moved. This gives us a life, a new and fresh. Worship thy feet is divine grace. Had you not come, we are told the message of Krishna, forceful and bold. That's your right. You have the maze. Maze is what Bhima operates. <laughs> Bhima, the maze. Save me a fallen, your divine grace. The line of service as drawn by you is pleasing and healthy like morning dew. The oldest of all, but in new dress, miracle done, your divine grace. This is such a beautiful point because before I took to Krishna consciousness, I was, uh, I was very attracted by English literature, <laughs> so, especially poetry. So, uh, I mean, it's not that, oh, Prabhupada is a great uh, spiritual master, great Jagat Guru, therefore his poem must be good. But even by objective standards, this is a very beautiful poem. It's extremely beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, some of the things in this are very, very uh, important for us to note, which Bhakti Sanasi Thakur especially noted these four lines. Impersonal, absolute descendant, thou hast proved. Impersonal calamity, thou hast moved. So the world is in the midst of a calamity. The whole world has got this impersonal calamity. You know? And Bhakti Sanasi Thakur is like the sun. He has risen like the sun to dissipate the darkness caused by this uh, uh, by the impersonal calamity, thinking that God is not a person. Uh, it is very difficult to find someone who actually understands what it means. God is a person. Everybody in India, they think, oh, power, 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 power. You know, like I remember when I was young, and when, when I used to go to the temple, the Brahmachari would tell, tell me, if I punch you now, would you tell that my energy punched you? Or would you tell that I punched you? It's obviously you punched me. What does it mean? Which means the energy is subordinate to the energetic now, there is one, uh, one, one joke which someone sent me once, you know, that uh, there was a criminal who was pleading in the court saying that my hand committed the, uh, uh, what is it, uh, theft, you know, and, uh, but I did not commit the theft. So, therefore, uh, you should not punish me because it's my hand which, uh, <laughs> which committed the theft. So, the judge gave a judgment. He said, Okay, only your hand will go to the jail. You may accompany your hand if you want to. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so that way the judge defeated that argument of the uh, criminal. So uh, this is like this to say that uh, uh, the, where is the energy coming from? This is Prabhupada's whole point. Energy is always subordinate to the energetic. And uh, if you notice here, Prabhupada is speaking about the message of Krishna forceful and bold. That's your right. You have the mace, he says. Uh, this is Bhakti Santhi Thakur's characteristic. He was very forceful and he was very bold. And this mace is like the gada, which uh, Bhima wields. And Prabhupada, uh, in his final days, we'll come, we'll come to that later, the end of the Lila Mantra, where he speaks about how his strategy was Bhagavatam in one hand, the gada in the other hand. This is coming from this Guru Maharaj. So he said, this is how I... Uh, I, that is my that was my strategy. I never compromised. Bhagavatam in one hand, the mace in the other hand. Mace does not mean literally beat somebody with a mace, but uh, it means that he defeated all opposing uh, philosophies. And then the offering, uh, very interesting offering, beautiful offering. Gentlemen, Prabhupada's offering, same, he wrote a poem and an offering. The offerings of such a homage as has been arranged this evening to the Acharya Deva is not a sectarian concern because when we speak of the fundamental principle of Guru Deva or Acharya Deva, we speak of something that is of universal application. There does not arise any question of discriminating my Guru from that of yours or anyone else's. There is only one Guru who appears in an infinity of forms to teach you, me and all others. The Guru or Acharya Deva, as we learn from the Bonafide scriptures, delivers the message of the absolute truth. I mean the transcendental abode of the absolute personality where everything non-differentially serves the absolute truth. Therefore, if the absolute truth is one abode to which we think there is no difference of opinion, the Guru also cannot be two. The Acharya Deva to whom we have assembled tonight to offer our humble homage 
is not the guru of a sectarian institution or one out of many differing exponents of the truth. On the contrary, he is the Jagat Guru or the Guru of all of us. The only difference is that some obey him wholeheartedly while others do not obey him directly. Gentlemen, our knowledge is so poor, our senses are so imperfect and our sources are so limited that it is not possible for us to even to have even the slightest knowledge of the absolute region without surrendering ourselves at the lotus feet of Sri Vyasadeva or his bona fide representative. We must conclude that the darkness of the present age is not due to lack of material advancement, but that we have lost the clue to our spiritual advancement, which is the prime necessity of human life and criterion of the highest type of civilization. Throwing of bombs from airplanes is no advancement of civilization from the primitive, uncivilized way of dropping big stones on the heads of enemies from the tops of the hills. Improvement of the art of killing our neighbors by inventing machine guns and by means of poisonous gases is certainly no advancement from primitive barbarism, priding itself on its art of killing by bows and arrows. Nor does the development of a sense of pampered selfishness prove anything more than intellectual animalism. Notice this. This is exactly what Prabhupada called the modern civilization. Is He says a deluxe version of dogs and hogs. So this is pampered selfishness. It's all about I, 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 I. This, this pampered selfishness is simply intellectual animalism. So uh, Bhagavatam calls it Dvipa the Pashu. So there are no human beings in this world. Only devotees are human beings. Others are animals. The two bear two legged animals. Uh, devotees means they're not just it's not devotees, but uh, Vaishnavas. So uh, animals, intellectual animals, because they think that they are great. They have intelligence, but intelligence is used for animal propensity. Therefore, it is called intellectual animalism. Thus, while others were yet in the womb of historical oblivion, the sages of India had developed a different kind of civilization which enables us to know ourselves. They had discovered that we are not at all material entities, but that we are all spiritual, permanent, and non-destructible servants of the Absolute. Gentlemen, although we are like ignorant children, the knowledge of the transcendence, still His divine grace, my Gurudeva, has kindled a small fire within us to dissipate the invincible darkness of the em empirical knowledge. Now, empirical knowledge the more you cultivate empirical knowledge, the more you get entangled. That's why Bhakti Mano Thakur says, material education makes a person into an ass. Uh, so, uh, and it's invincible. You cannot get out of that. You cannot get out of that darkness because uh, the example is, like, suppose a spider uh, gets entangled, so suppose an insect gets entangled in a spider's web. The more it struggles to get out of it, the more it's going to get entangled. So the more the pursuit of material knowledge, the more you're getting going to get entangled in. Just like I'm a student of physics. So uh, those, who, who, those of you who studied higher levels of physics would know that all scientists openly acknowledge the more we try to know about nature, the more complex it gets. It's extremely, it gets more and more complex. That's the nature. The, the, the more you try to get into empirical knowledge, the more you get uh, the more complicated it gets. So that's why it's called the invincible darkness of the empirical knowledge. And there's so much so on the safe side that no amount of philosophical argument of the empirical, empiric schools of thought can deviate us an inch from the position of our eternal dependence on the lotus feet of his divine grace. And we are prepared to challenge the most erudite scholars of the Mayavada school on this vital issue. Notice that. We are prepared to challenge the most erudite scholars, the Mayavada school on this vital issue and the personality of God and his transcendental sports in Goloka alone constitute the sublime information of the Vedas. Personally, I have no hope to have any direct service for the coming crores of births in the sojourn of my life. But I'm confident that some day or other, I shall be delivered from this mire of delusion in which I'm present so deeply sunk. Therefore, let me, with all of my earnestness, pray at the lotus feet of my divine master to let me suffer the lot which I am destined to do for all my past misdoing. But to let me have this power of recollection that I am nothing 
but a tiny servant of the ab almighty absolute God realized through the unflinching mercy of my divine master. Let me therefore bow down at his lotus feet with all the humility at my command. What a brilliant offering, Vaishnava Prabhu. Now, um, so uh, he had gone to Bombay so that he could try to improve his business. That is the purpose of his visit to Bombay. Uh, now he is from, from beginning to from manager to an agent. He was now trying to be a manufacturer. So why trying to be a manufacturer? He first thought, okay, let me simultaneously try to be man, try to do manufacturing. At the same time, let me work for some reputed company. So he worked for Smith's Institute, which is also a pharmaceutical company. But what happened was that his supervisor's son complained that uh, Prabhupada was trying to not giving enough attention to Smith's Institute business because he was interested in developing his own business. So what happened was they removed Prabhupada from there and uh, the supervisor's son himself became the, took Prabhupada's position of uh, marketing. Anyway, that is like a political thing. Uh, but nevertheless, Prabhupada was left without uh, 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 that, that job at that point in time. So, okay, before I go on to that, sorry. I forgot to mention a few important things. Um, when Prabhupada wrote that poem, uh, his godbrother Bhakti Pradeep Tirta Maharaj, who is the who was the editor of the Gaudium of the of the Amonist, he gave the title Kavi poem. It's a beautiful poetry. So then others also started referring to Prabhupada as Kavi. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was so moved by what Prabhupada wrote about both the both the uh, poem and the uh, uh, article uh, and the offering that he instructed the editor of the harmonist Bhakti Pradeep Tirtha Maharaj whatever he writes publish it that's it so uh, so whatever he writes publish it means uh, later the government is not willing to publish it whatever he writes publish it means we accept that whatever Prabhupada has written is authorized because Pra Bhakti Santa Sajatakur himself gave the instructions whatever he writes publish it so there it is, our, 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 uh, uh, the Simha Guru, the one who never compromised. He knew that Prabhupada had understood his temperament, and understood his mission. So he said, whatever he writes, publish it. And Bhakti Sanda Sasri Thakur's always, his, his criteria was in general, not for Prabhupada. Generally, the criteria was also for Prabhupada. But in generally, the criteria was, you would check how many times the name Krishna or Chaitanya was mentioned in the article. So, uh, what happens is okay. So then, after he after uh, after he uh, loses his job at uh, Smith's Institute, and now he has to he has to do the pharmaceutical thing all all on his own. So at that time, he was wondering because whatever he's trying is failing, you know. So uh, he read uh, from the Bhagavatam. Shri Prabhupada encountered this verse. Yasyaham Manugrama Anugrinami Harishye Taddhanam Shanai Tato Dhanam Tejanti Asya Swajana Dukkha Dukkitam When I feel especially mercifully dispersed towards someone, I gradually take away all his material possessions, his friends and relatives, then reject this poverty-stricken and most wretched fellow. Okay, so, Prabhupada asked his godbrother, uh, Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj, that uh, is this what is happening to me? Is, is Krishna being specially merciful to me? Therefore, he's taking away all my material possessions. So then Bhakti Shakshak Sridhar Maharaj confirmed it. He said, yes, this is the plan of the Lord to bring you closer to fulfilling the desire of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Um, okay. Next is Now, in July of 1935, um, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati came to uh, came to Mumbai uh, for the installation of the deities there. You know. And during this time, Prabhupada had helped the Gaudiya Mat so much in their activities. Now, they were really pushing for Srila Prabhupada, uh, for Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati to inspire Prabhupada to join full-time because anyway, his business was failing. So that he really wanted, they thought this is the right opportunity now to ask Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur 
to request Prabhupada to join the ashram, you know, and uh, um, Bhakti Sanjay Sutakur said that uh, when the time comes, he will do everything. There's no need for him to join the mud. That's a very, very important instruction. Prabhupada said, I did not hear this directly, but my God brothers told me that when they wanted me to join, this is what my Guru Maharaj uh, replied. It is better that he is living outside your company. He will do. When the time comes, he will do everything himself. You don't have to recommend him. So Prabhupada did not uh, join. This is in July of 1935. Subsequently, uh, uh, he went to Vrindavan for Kartik of 1935. November 1935, he went to Kartik. He went to Vrindavan for Kartik. And it is here we we here we where he got all those uh, very uh, very very uh, critical instructions from Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. First thing was that he spoke about Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur spoke about uh, the fact that after the Bagh Bazar temple was established, he, the residents, the sannyasis, and others were were actually uh, fighting about which room who will occupy. So Shri Bhakti Sarasthi was very disturbed by that uh, whole thing because he went from Altadanga Road to that place and he he created uh, he gave Brahmin initiation to people who are not qualified to be Brahmanas by birth. Uh, I mean, uh, they are not Brahmanas by birth, but uh, who gave them uh, Bhakti Sarasthi Thakur gave them Brahmin initiation according to their qualifications. So he he was now worried that if all these people if they don't exhibit Brahminical qualities if they don't uh, exhibit Vaishnava qualities, they start fighting out of this uh, material mentality of I mean mine, then what will happen to his preaching mission? Because he's complete, he had taken such a forceful and bold stand of initiating uh, anyone from any uh, uh, any walk of life, any any background into Brahminical life. It was unprecedented. So he was worried, worried about the status of his mission. So Prabhupada's reflects, Shila Prabhupada. He was lamenting that these men are simply after the stones and bricks of the building. He condemned. He was very, very sorry. Agun Jolbe means, he said, there will be fire in the Gaudiya Mat. And when there's a fire, what happens? There's a big fire. It destroys the property. So he was referring to the fire as destroying the preaching mission. The preaching mission will be set on fire by uh, petty politics and rivalry. When we were living in a rented house, Shila Bhakti Siddhanta said, if you could collect 200 or 300 rupees, this is a Surmanath writing. When we are living in a rented house, Shila Bhakti Siddhanta said, if you could collect 200 or 300 rupees, we were living very nicely at Altadam. We were happier then. But since we have been given this marble palace in Bhag Bazaar, there is friction between our men. Who will occupy this room? Who will occupy that room? Who will be the proprietor of this room? Everyone is planning in different ways. It would be better to take the marble from the walls and secure money. If I could do this and print books, that would be better. And uh, Prabhupada got those famous instructions in uh, in that uh, in that same Gaudiya Mat, uh, in that same uh, trip to Radhakund, where Bhakti Sanskar said, uh, "If you ever get money, the same while talking on the banks of Radhakund, first he spoke about Agun Jwalbe, then he said, if you ever get money.'" print books. So Prabhupada said, my Guru Maharaj gave me that instruction. Therefore, I'm blindly following that instruction. I'm simply pushing you all distribute books. I'm asking you, where is book? Where is book? Where is book? That was his dedication to his Guru Maharaj because he got that personal instruction on the bank of Radha Kund and he could understand the urgency of the instruction. He could understand the mood of his Guru Maharaj, how disturbed he was because it is the only the books which can, uh, which can prevail. Even the buildings collapse. People collapse. Still, the books will prevail. So, books are critically important for the Krishna consciousness movement. Okay. So, um, in December of 1936, Srila Prabhupada wrote a letter to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Chakur. Beautiful letter. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance to your lotus feet. You have got many disciples and I am one of them. But they are doing direct service to you. Some of them are brahmacharis. Some of them are sannyasis, but I am a householder. I cannot. Sometimes I give monetary help why I cannot, but while I cannot give you direct service. Is there any particular service I can do two weeks later? 
Abhay received a reply. I am coolly confident that you can explain in English our thoughts and arguments to the people who are not conversant with the languages of the other members. This will do much good to yourself as well as your audience. I have every hope that you can turn yourself into a very good English preacher if you serve the mission to inculcate the novel impression of Lord Chaitanya's teachings in the people in general as well as philosophers and religionists. So this was the mandate given by Bhaktisiddhanta Sasutaku preach to the common people and the philosophers and the religionists. So present Krishna consciousness to everyone. So when he wrote this letter, uh, Bhaktisiddhanta Sasutaku was in Puri and he was very uh, uh, ill. And on the 1st of January 1937, he left this world. And these are his final instructions. Bhaktisiddhanta Sasutaku. I advise all to preach the teachings of Rupa Raghunath disciples of Lord Chaitanya, with all energy and resources. Our ultimate goal shall be to become the dust of the lotus feet of Sri Rupa, Sri Sri Rupa and Raghunath Goswamis. You should all work conjointly under the guidance of a spiritual master with a view to serve the absolute knowledge, the personality of God. You should live somehow or other without any quarrel in this mortal world, only for the service of God. Do not please give up the service of God in spite of all dangers, all criticisms, and all discomforts. Do not be disappointed. For most people in the world, do not serve the personality of God. Do not give up your own service, which is your everything and all. Neither reject the process of chanting and hearing of the transcendental holy name of God. You should always chant the transcendental name of God with patience and forbearance like a tree and humbleness like a straw. There are many amongst you who are very well qualified, who are well qualified and able workers. We have no other desire whatsoever. So Prabhupada took this instruction very seriously where Bhakti Sanskrit Stakur is talking about working conjointly. That is why Prabhupada established the governing body. He said, my Guru Maharaj desire was this, to establish a governing body. Therefore, I'm stressing on this. And Prabhupada established the governing body. Not only that, towards the end of his pastimes on earth, he established the Bhakti Vedanta Swami Charity Trust. He said, I want to unite my uh, God brothers and uh, everybody to see if everyone can work together to fulfill the desire of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. So up to until his very last breath, he was trying to fulfill the desire of his Guru Maharaj to work conjointly. Although they were not willing to work with Prabhupada, Prabhupada was still trying even until his last breath. So, uh, is there anything else that um, we could say here? Yeah, I think I'll stop there. Nothing else that I need to say in that. But one, one small thing is that uh, Prabhupada's wife was were, initially he wanted to uh, before initiation he was trying to get his god brothers to come to his house and he wanted to have some katha and uh, satsangas but his wife was not inclined. But after he got initiated he would directly give lectures because he was conferred the title Kavi and was a recognized preacher. So he himself was trying to call his guests and businessmen friends and others but his wife would sit on top of the, on the first floor and drink tea along with the... She would sit along with the children and then she would drink tea, but she would not attend the uh, classes. So she was not very interested in preaching at all. So Prabhupada had, uh, had, uh, had, a, uh, had a difficult time at home uh, because of the fact that uh, he didn't get any cooperation from his wife in the matter of fulfilling the instructions of his guru. And... Uh, so this was a very major uh, event in Prabhupada's life because uh, his father departed, greatest well-wisher, and then his spiritual master also, uh, also the greatest well-wisher. They also, he also departed. So Prabhupada was very uh, deeply affected by both the departures, not in a negative sense, of course, but he was feeling their separation and he simply wanted to somehow or the other execute the desire of his uh, Guru Maharaj. Okay, I'll stop there. If there are any comments or questions, there are some. I think there are 10 messages on chat.
<laughs> How do we see the mercy of Guru Deva in inanimate objects? Why not? We have some. Uh, uh, right now, I'm sitting here in uh, in 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 uh, this Mayapur Institute classroom and giving a talk. The walls are inanimate. Everything is inanimate here. But uh, this 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 is by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and his followers. So I'm able to give a talk. So we how how did this arrangement come to be? So uh, that is the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and the follow and his followers. Uh, what is the exact date and month of initiation of Shiva Prabhupada? As in many books, I have seen uh, the year 1932 and in some as 1933. Okay. Um, I haven't come across the exact date. It was only, I, 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 I did notice while preparing for the class that uh, some places it mentions 32, but in some places it mentions 33. I don't know actually. So, uh, it is around 32, 33. I mean, if somebody does some historical research, they'll be able to do it. Uh, they'll be able to produce that exact date. But, but Sachur Maharaj, when he was writing the Leela Murta, he did not have that uh, freedom of unlimited time. He had to finish it. So whatever he could, he put it there. And I also looked up elsewhere. I'm, I'm not able to find an exact date. I did look for it because I knew that a question like this may come up. <laughs> but, uh, but I don't know. I couldn't find it. Okay, so if there are any questions, where is this one? I'm not able to see anyone. What do I see? Yeah, Prem Gaur Sundar Prabhu. Hi, Mr. Prabhuji, Dandavat. Uh, Prabhuji, I wanted to just uh, check with you. You mentioned that uh, <clears throat> after we finish the various chapters, you would give us important bullet points for our personal application or preaching application and also for bringing up our children. There are some very important lessons from the various chapters. You said you would give oh, well, bullet uh, points. I, I said that I'll cover it during the class, but you request me to put it in the form of bullet, which I will uh, yeah. definitely do. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, definitely. Okay. Yeah. I I say read your suggestion, but uh, I'll do it in the coming week. Fine, fine. No problem. Okay. Anyway, okay. Uh, okay. This was one hand raised, right? Yeah. Um, So what should we do? Shall we close? Yeah. Okay. So uh, if there are no more questions for today, we can end today. One more chat. Thank you for much. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful class conversation. Thank you to all of you. Uh, I, not just sort of some art humility, but in reality, uh, the speaker and the audience always benefit. And uh, every time that I give a class, I feel much so much purified by just the act of giving the class. And especially knowing that there are so many Vaishnavas here uh, hearing it. If, if, we, if we notice what uh, Bhakti Sarada Sarsi Thakur's mood was, he would always, uh, uh, whenever somebody would offer obeisances, he would always say, Das Vasmi, I'm your servant. Actually, he means it, not just saying in some artificial, uh, artificially. So if we also develop that same mood that, uh, uh, Whatever we're doing is simply because uh, we've been, so it's, it's an act of mercy by uh, Srila Prabhupada and his followers, that due to which we are able to do whatever we're able to do. So, uh, thank you for uh, your, thank you for all of your association. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. So, we'll end for today. One chakal patarubhyasya kripa sundubhye evacha patitanam pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo.